can someone take a judgment against you personally when it's a debt from your LLC or other company? My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a business law and estate planning attorney. I've got offices in Edina, Minnesota and New York City. And today we're going to talk about one of those main concerns you have when you set up an LLC or another company. And that is how do you protect yourself from personal liability? What happens when someone tries to come after you personally? So for many of my clients who come to set up an LLC, this is their primary concern. We're setting up that LLC for liability protection. And for liability protection, that means that your personal assets are not subject to the debts of that company. So a common example is we set up an LLC to own your rental property. You're renting it out to tenants. And if something happens on the property and somebody wants to sue the property, they can't come after your personal home. They can't come after your personal bank account because the liability is limited to the value of that property, which is what's owned by the LLC. So that LLC creates a layer of liability protection for you, which is one of the main reasons to set it up for a rental property. If you're talking about even just a general business, it's the same principle. We want to limit the liability of that business to just the assets of the business. So your personal assets, your house, your cars, your personal bank accounts with your family, those are not going to be liable to a court lawsuit. They wouldn't be open to a judgment against you. We want that judgment to stay just on the LLC or your business. Now, what you need to watch out for, however, is a personal guarantee. So many times, if you're starting out a business and you want to take on some kind of debt, let's say you're signing a lease, you're taking a line of credit or even a mortgage on your rental property in the name of your LLC, all of these lenders, all of these financial institutions, they'll often ask you for what's called a personal guarantee. Now that personal guarantee says that if the business is unable to pay, your assets are then subject to collection when they need to come get their money. So if you've signed that personal guarantee, you need to be very clear that your personal assets could be subject to a lawsuit. If something goes wrong with that business, and let's say it's even not you, maybe it's your business partner has been embezzling some money or done something wrong, your assets, your house, your personal bank accounts could be subject to a lawsuit if you've signed a personal guarantee. And of course, the reason the lenders want this security is if you're a brand new business and you have no track record of making money or no credit history, no nothing in your business, they want to make sure they're not just giving you money or renting out space to you with no hopes of ever being repaid. So you can be as clear with this as you can. So we're going to have all the assets in the LLC, just in the LLC's name. And let's say you don't sign any personal guarantees. So there's no personal guarantees anywhere in your LLC, but now your LLC is sued. One of the biggest problems my clients come to me with, I get very nervous, is that that plaintiff's attorney has sued the LLC, but also put their name on the pleadings as well. Now, the reason they do this is because they're going to try to advance a theory of what's called piercing the corporate veil. They're going to try to claim that the LLC isn't really an LLC. You're just using it to hide for liability sake. This is obviously a big concern if you're on the plaintiff side, because you know that if you can't get those personal assets, you're probably never going to collect. Maybe the LLC doesn't have enough money. Now you who owns the LLC, your first step is you want to tell that court, no, no, this is a very legitimate LLC and we need to dismiss you as a party. You didn't sign any documents in your personal capacity. There's no personal guarantee. There's no reason for your personal assets to be subject to the court's jurisdiction. To navigate this with a court, it shows the importance of having proper business documents and proper tax returns, contracts, all of the things that we see from legitimate businesses. So one area that a lot of people get worried about, and rightfully so, is they go online, they use a website, they just set up their LLC, and then they never sign their operating agreement. Sometimes they don't even ever get an EIN from the IRS. They just have their business running, but they've never formalized the documents. And then they get sued in court and the judge says, wait a second, what is to this LLC? There's nothing here. There's not even an operating agreement. There's no EIN. There's no tax returns. Is this really a legitimate business? The flip side is the way that I like to work with my clients. We want to have a nice, clear set of corporate documents. We want to have your operating agreement, your shareholder agreement for your business. We want contracts with your vendors, contracts with employees, independent contractors. If you've been in business a few years, we want to have our tax returns showing the money that's come in, the money being paid out. We want to make sure we have a nice document trail that shows this LLC is a legitimate business. Even if it's just owning a rental property, we want that LLC to have its documents in place 
ready to go. We want to see expenses for the LLC being paid out of the LLC bank account, let's say to fix the porch or to put in a new HVAC system. We want to show the court that it's a legitimate business and not just a simple way for you to try to avoid liability. This is where using those online websites often will cause you to fall just a little bit short. The problem is that just a little bit short can make you subject to a lawsuit and keep you in that lawsuit personally. So when I talk to my clients, there's always two ways to do this. And we really went through the problem with number one, which is doing it yourself. So if you've done it with some website online and you've just filled out some documents, you probably overpaid for your filing fee, but didn't do anything after that, you're always going to be concerned that if that LLC is sued, is it going to look legitimate to a court? The second way to do things, the better way to do it, and you'll probably do it because you're watching videos and trying to learn more about the subject, is to work with a professional. Work with your attorney to make sure that all of your business records are up to date. We have contracts in place, tax returns, we have your EIN, everything we need so that just in case the business gets sued, we can show that it's a legitimate business and not subject to being uh, under the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. If you're ready to get started, or you're not sure what the next steps are, you can always go to my website, andrewmairs.com. There's a red legal strategy session button on the front page. Click that and you'll take to my personal calendar. From there, we can set up a 15 or 20 minute phone call to discuss where your business is right now and give you some next steps and some options to move forward. They can take a judgment against you personally for a debt of your LLC, unless you're careful and make sure that your formalities are followed and we protect your personal assets.